Welcome to this short movie about the zero deviation life cycle and our smart technology migration. We're going to look at a, no a southbound view where we take log files, and this is what this fragment of the uh, movie talks about. Um, so we take some log files, typical trace log from something, and we import it into the southbound of smart technology migration. Um, here's a typical log file. Um, we can take many different log file formats from many different systems, which allows us to unlock that legacy. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take that log file, load it into this part of smart technology migration toolset, and create from it, as a result, a sequence diagram. And that sequence diagram um, allows us to expose the structural aspects of the process that's actually been recorded in that log file. Um, so this is just the southbound. It can, it can live in a cloud, it can be on-premise or off-premise. Um, and once we've clicked it, we get a view of what's called a session, uh, which is that particular business process and how that might look. And we can go click on the uh, specific session uh, URL and bring up effectively the sequence diagram um, that we've gleaned from that particular log file. So that's the southbound. And then we can move to the northbound, which is taking those log files and creating a model um, of the voice of the machine. So uh, the sequence diagram really represents a specific instance of the voice of the machine, and the model will represent all of them. So when we get that log file, it's not just a log file that we get. We get example messages as well. So here's an example message that we might have gleaned from the log file. So that there needs to be sufficient detail. We don't need everything, we don't need the payload, we just need the session identity information. Um, and then we get a set of um, process flows, as sequence diagrams. And this is identical um, to the previous sequence diagrams we saw, it's just it's rendered in a different format in an Eclipse part of the tool. And then we're able to take those sequence diagrams and automatically construct a model. Um, so this model um, specifically is going to be a BPN type model. Um, which is very convenient if you want to load that back into IBM's BPM platform, for example, which is BPM2 compliant. So that allows us to create this model. We can open the model and inspect it and have a look. So here's, the, here's an example of that model. Um, and then we can have a look at uh, different aspects of that model. So this is the overview of the model. Um, so that the choreography, if you will, of the BPMN, and then we can look at specific aspects. So this is the bank. And then we can do some nice things. We can actually make sure that, that the model captures all of those process flows by testing the model. And that's what we're going to see now. So we test the model by simulating it, test the model by simulating the requirement over it. And then we do, um, we might add some additional requirements. So we might have some additional sequence diagrams that are constructed by hand. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have a look at um, a new successful loan application instead of the original one. So if we go back to the original one, we can see there's four swim lanes. If we look at the new one, you can see that there's, a, again, four swim lanes. But the difference is, is these interactions here. So when we look at the previous one, we've just got the delivery. And here what we've got is confirm rating, uh, rating confirmed. So we've added an additional step. This might be to do with a regulation or it might be just to do with some uh, additional guidance that... Um, uh, that, that we need. So what we can do with this uh, this new successful loan application is we can simulate this as well. So we're going to simulate this, but we're going to simulate it against the um, the original um, uh, as is model just to make sure. So this is against the as is model. You can see the, the the word as. So we assume that's correct. So once we've simulated this, we can see what needs to change. We should see that the confirms go red. Uh, which is which suggests that we need to change the bank and we need to change the logistics components. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to um, take all of the previous scenarios um, that we want to con keep, so we don't select successful loan application, and then we're going to create um, a new um, uh, a new BPMN uh, architecture and design, and we're going to navigate to the appropriate uh, we'll call it complex lending again uh, and then we'll just um, have a look at uh, you know, what folder to put that in um, so we'll just go and have a look for the folder so that should be uh, under complex lending and we'll put that in the 2B so you, you'll see that the 2B is empty at the moment so once we, we, we do this and we press OK we should see that that model appears here so here it is here 
So when we go back to the successful loan application here and we do another simulation. So this time I'm going to do the simulation again, but, but uh, instead of um, hooking it to the, uh, the as-is model here, I'm going to hook it to the 2B model. So I'll just clear it down, press the simulation button, uh, and when the dialog comes up, I'm just going to redirect it to go to the 2B. So fortunately it's already there, and I can do that for all of them. and then do a simulation here and we should see that this now works and then we'll go back to one of the previous ones and make sure that works too so it's kind of like a regression test so let's just make sure that the insufficient lending also works against the 2B model so we'll do the, do the same exactly the same here And that should go green now as well. And I'll leave the last one. So that's gone green as well. So now we've got our 2B model. What we're going to do is we're going to bundle all of this up and we're going to um, export it as a zip file. Um, so we're going to say general um, archive um, and call it um, uh, complex lending dot zip. And then we're going to navigate to the appropriate place which happens to be here. Um, so we're going to do uh, documents. Oops. Well, actually, we'll just put it in Steve. So we'll stick it in Steve uh, and do it there. And we'll just say complex lending dot zip and finish. So now that that's done, the interesting thing that we can do now, and, and this is what our complex lending looks like at, at, at the high level, and this is what it now looks like at the bank level. So you can see here that, that, that if we scroll through this, we can see um, the, new, um, uh, the, new, the new delivery, the confirm rating. So this is the new item here. So the interesting thing that we can do now is that we can actually upload this into uh, Blueworks Live. So I've got Blueworks Live open here. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is just import um, the zip file for this. So I'm going to import bpmn2 and then navigate to go and find it. And that should be in Steve. Um, and we should find it under complex lending, which is uh, this one here today. So we see the date today. Double click on that and do the import. So here we go. Now that's all imported. We've now got our process imported. So if we uh, click on the bank, just to confirm, item that we added um, to the 2B um, scenario, um, and indeed it's, it shows up here just as it did in the Eclipse. So I hope this has been um, uh, a useful exercise in introducing you to smart technology migration. Um, if you'd like to know more, visit, visit us at zerodeviation.com or send an email to zdlc at cognizant.com.